And don't. Okay, I think that is it. In their case, by prioritizing rehabilitation, they are going to eliminate retribution. But ladies and gentlemen, how can we eliminate retribution for those cases when children were coming to school and they were killing their own, uh, their own teachers and they were killing their own classmates or for those juveniles that have raped other uh, children? This is the word prioritizing. We mean we use both of system, but we prioritize one of them. Well, let's get back to the, their arguments. First of, all, for, first of all, the first argument was that retribution is not efficient. They were talking about recidivism and about the Mississippi and the Missouri example, which is only one example of uh, the fact that recidivism is, uh, caused, and, uh, is caused by re uh, retribution. But why don't we say that there are a lot of other causes of this recidivism? And it's not about the fact that retribution is not efficient. It is about the fact that uh, they can be economical problems which force people to go and to, to so, um, so, and which force people to go and commit robberies and attack other people. Uh, the, their second so, um, point was about the fact that um, it poorly prepares people to society, that retribution poorly prepares people to society, and they live a stigma. But no, uh, in, the, in the last months of retribution, when in the last months of detention in the jail, actually uh, the imprisonment um, the, those who are in prison have uh, a special um, rehabilitation system which is focused on them getting the job uh, and f uh, is, which is focusing on them to help them rehabilitate and focus into society. But we want to emphasize that the most important fact that we uh, emphasize on retribution. Retribution has a small part of rehabilitation, but due to retribution, people will... Um, uh, won't, these juveniles won't um, want to commit other crimes. They will be prevented both from physical, because they are detained in this, in this uh, in prison, in these prisons, and from the moral point of view, because others won't want to be like them, won't want to get to the prison. The second argument was about that rehabilitation has benefits. They change the community where persons live. Well, it is not uh, like this, because rehabilitation systems uh, are not de uh, like the detention one. They leave the persons, the juveniles, to go home. But if the reason of um, if the reason of um, that uh, b bad behavior is the community, is the environment, we are talking about poor people. We are talking about the environment of drug and alcohol addicted. Well, after rehabilitation, they come back to that. Um, to that environment. And what is the purpose of rehabilitation if they come back to that environment and still go and uh, um, commit crimes? And there's th a third argument is about the fact that youth crime is not conscious. But we say that juveniles also ha uh, always have a choice. Juveniles have their own uh, ability to anal analyze uh, the situation. And in fact, if, you, if we say that they are not able uh, to commit uh, and to have their own judgments, we say that we ignore their juvenile's rights to make a decision, which is, which is not quite well. And I'd like to point out the fact that neither of these arguments, that retribution is not efficient or that rehabilitation has uh, benefits or that the youth crime is not conscious, none of these arguments are related uh, to their criteria, understanding and social harmony. So, going back to our own arguments. Firstly, we want to, back to uh, go back to a just society. What is, ladies and gentlemen, a just society? It is a society that values fairness. And in this case, retribution does not ignore the, fi the victim. Retribution is actually protecting the, victim, the victim's rights and provides fairness. By seeking to reduce the crime, it seeks promoting society rights to safety. I mean, there is one offender, but there are more victims uh, because the direct victim is the one who has been um, raped or uh, who has been uh, sold something. But there are also families, there are also friends that are indirectly um, 
uh, attacked by that offender. And in this case, when we apply retribution, the society understands that justice, that government, really um, cares about them, and it's about trust. Secondly, rehabilitation makes the juveniles that committed serious crimes, that, uh, and that those who are um, not attending and not trying to change themselves, uh, become invisible. Their crimes are, uh, get no, um, don't, don't get noticed. But this society has the right to know where it, um, these juveniles that committed crimes are. The society has to know that their neighbors committed serious crimes in order to solve themselves. So this is why uh, we urge you to vote for the negative team. Um, firstly, um, you said that uh, the rehabilitation in the prisons will help them get jobs and stuff, but don't you think in society that's going to cause them to still get less respect because they're an ex-con? We're talking about the fact that the retribution system has also um, some kind of rehabilitation, you know, in the last months. We uh, talked about it. So and it helps uh, them, uh, the juveniles that committed crimes to reintegrate into society. But we emphasize the fact that uh, due to retribution, uh, it's going to be um, two benefits. One of them, that uh, the other one were not uh, going to attempt to okay. commit crimes. That's fine, thank you. But um, surely if you say that, uh, that is prior prioritizing rehabilitation. Yeah, we prioritize one week, one year. Um, so if, if you're saying in the prisons they have rehabilitation, surely that is yeah, prioritizing Yeah, but it's prioritizing retribution because we apply retribution firstly as um, a kind of a shock system in order to send a, um, a strong message to the society. To the um, so 97% of all juvenile crimes are non-violent. Um, do you think that it would be easier to rehabilitate someone who hasn't done a non-violent crime? Yes, we believe so. So, therefore, don't you think that um, we I mean, should rehabilitate them and not send them to a prison? It's, um, I really believe that this kind of juveniles that have committed non-violent crimes, 97% that you were talking about, uh, they will be able to reintegrate into society. It uh, won't be such a difficult problem to them because um, if they regret what they did, uh, they will be helped by those who care about them. Okay. Um, when do you think the child becomes an adult? Like, it can think for itself. Like... Well, it quite depends. Okay, but so if a child can't think for itself, then surely do you think it should either be rehabilitated so that it can think for itself? Okay, or do you think the, it should point, be sent to the point that we wanted to stress in our case was the fact that uh, when we say that a child has no um, ability to com to make and, uh, a, ju a judgment, a moral judgment, uh, then we you know, actually endure his right. Uh, okay, of choice. That's, that's cool. um, okay, so okay. as we as we said, 85% of the juveniles in the US have mental disabilities. So surely, if um, if they do have a mental disability, and 85% is a big percentage, don't you think that they shouldn't be sent to a prison? They should be sent to a rehabilitation center where they can be taught to think. Okay, could you please just uh, explain so, the fact that 